In this example, we're going to be looking at the function that involves a couple of trig functions, a cotangent of x over cosine of x. And we're going to be looking at the limit as x goes to pi over 2. So let's do a quick review here of calculating things with uh, trigonometry. So using the unit circle, we've got pi over 2 being uh, the angle 90 degrees, it would be the angle that corresponds to the point at the top of the unit circle. Now that point at the top of the unit circle would have ordered pair zero comma one. And uh, that's going to uh, be what we correspond to the angle pi over two. And so that's gonna help us be able to do the initial evaluation because remember, as we're calculating limits, the first thing we do is try to plug in and see what happens. So as we plug in, we're looking at needing to evaluate cotangent of pi over two and a cosine of pi over two. Well, cosine of pi over two would be the x value in the ordered pair for our unit circle. So that x value there is going to be zero from our unit circle point. And so now we need to look at cotangent to see what's happening on top. We know we're gonna run into an issue because we have zero on the bottom, but let's see what happens on the top. Cotangent, the function, would be cosine over sine. So we're looking at cosine over sine, cosine being the x value from the coordinate, and that would be zero sine would be the y value from the ordered pair, and that would be one. So we really are looking at a zero over zero indeterminate form. Okay. Anytime we have an indeterminate form, we need to try to uh, situate ourselves so that our problem factor cancels. And so we see this problem factor is really the cosine factor. And so we need to rewrite this. We're gonna go back to putting uh, the limit notation because we um, are gonna go back to having not computed the limit because we need to adjust the way we write this function. So cotangent of x, like we talked about, is cosine of x over sine of x. And that's in the top with cosine of x being in the bottom. So now we have a fraction within a fraction. So we're dividing fractions here. We could think about this cosine of x in the bottom as being like a cosine of x over one, if that helps you think about dividing these fractions. So we're still uh, have this limit notation in front because we uh, haven't taken the limit this time around yet, but we need to go ahead and rewrite this. So we've got the cosine of x over sine of x from the top. And instead of dividing by that fraction, we would be multiplying by the reciprocal. So that would be one over cosine of x. Now notice we have a cosine of x factor on the top and the bottom that are gonna cancel with each other. So we are looking at the limit as x goes to pi over two um, of just one over sine of x. So now that that problematic factor has canceled, we're ready to try the limit again by plugging in. So we can drop the limit notation because we are taking the limit by plugging in. And so we're looking at one over sine of pi over two. Okay, so sine of pi over two is the y coordinate from that ordered pair of the unit circle. So that's gonna be a one. So we're looking at one over one so that our final answer for this limit after we use the cancellation property there is one.